Hello everybody, we should be live, thanks for joining us um, for the final part, I assume it will be the final part because we should actually get through it this time, of the Blonde Sight Report. Um, we kind of, uh, I thought we could, um, we were kind of getting to the end of it last time, um, but I thought there was a there was kind of a controversial bit that we're going to talk about, so I thought we could drag that out for another hour. Drag that out like <laughs> it's, like, it's like I'm making money from this, but obviously not. But um, so I've got uh, the full crew with me today because otherwise there'd be no point to uh, doing it. So uh, Shin, uh, Tiffany, and Amanda and James are here. So thanks for joining us, guys. And I think. Um, I've, I've, have you all enjoyed going over this, by the way, Tiffany? Have you, have you, you know, you've kind of, you wane in interest of Lorne. Do you still find it, in, have you found it interesting to go through like an official report of breaking down this guy's uh, character? Oh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see what a professional has to say, you know, because she's going to have access to all of the, um, all of the, probation reports, everything that's available in order to evaluate him, as well as an interview and the testing that she did. So it is interesting. Mm. And uh, Amanda James, do you hate Lorne even more after this? Not that we've finished it yet. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Go, <laughs> of course. It, it was shocking to read about the nine-year-old, you know, about the things that he failed the polygraph for and his his stories for why he failed, about thinking about the high school girls I wasn't particularly shocked about the high school girls, but hearing just seeing a nine year old girl mentioned was very shocking and disgusting. So yeah, I, I definitely hate him more. But I think <laughs> my favorite part about the psyche valve, it will never not be funny that he did not read this before he sent it to the woman that he's trying to woo. He is so lazy and his brain it works at such a minimal capacity <laughs> that he didn't even bother to read it. Best. That is remarkable. It's, it, 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 it kind of I it says a lot that, obviously we can laugh at the fact that just a total moron would send, he knows he's a registered sex offender, there's a report there, and he didn't read it before sending it to the woman that he's trying to impress. I I don't think it can be overstated how ludicrous that fucking whole, mm -hmm. just that whole scenario is. But it says to me, he believes that he is no threat. He believes the rest of that report is going to completely exonerate him, which is really interesting. I think we... Do you know, Lon... Lon... Lon's lies to himself are so profound that that's why he lives in this alternate reality. But it's kind of like he makes it up as he goes along. And and this just um, typifies it more than anything, I think. Well, another thing that's so funny and shows you how stupid he is is that he sent it to begin with. Everything he has ever sent, these women that he has been involved with has ended up on the internet you you would really think that he would learn no but he doesn't think them. but he doesn't think at that moment that there's any risk because he thinks he's convinced themselves that they're real so like we can look at it I, now and go long what are you sending your private documents to these catfishes for but he at this moment despite how many times he's been done before thinks oh no these are real the robot and the smudge on the fucking camera, a reel. I'll send it over. What? I I think his confidence is what makes it really hilarious. I think he did read it, uh, but I think he, you know, just like his sociopathic tendencies, he he only has um, selective memory. In in this case, selective hearing or selective reading. He only picked out cherry picked the good parts out, and then assumed everything because he's a shitty reader. You know, he's he doesn't have much. <laughs> Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, education or whatever, but, um, to me, I, I think it's, I think it's hilarious that he paid for it. And, he, and, and I, I often wondered during the process when he was being, uh, evaluating and he was having the polygraph go on, things were going off the rail at that point. Didn't he think that the report was going to reflect that? I got caught a lot here. Are they going to talk about this? I mean, how does he just erase that? 
experience in thinking that report's going to exonerate him after he just went through that. They caught him in lies. They caught him with admissions. Uh, and he somehow thinks that the report's going to, going to clear him. That, that to me is just mind boggling. Well, yeah, because he read his own self assessment back and, right. and thought that that was, that was the important part that was going to exonerate him. But I have to correct myself. He did read it beforehand, actually, because he underlined the parts that he took issue with, that he had to talk to Casey about and he had to talk to the the polygraph examiner and probation about. And namely, that was the nine year old girl. So he actually he did read it beforehand, but I guess he forgot about all the well, bad you know, stuff in there. But he had clues of way ahead of time. It was not going to be a good report at during the time of the process. I mean, it's like it's like, you know, you did shitty on an exam. You didn't study for it. Uh, and, you know, when you get it hand, hand it back to you the next day, you totally expect, you know, a failure or a bad grade or something. He had the opposite. He, you know, he, he knows he he did shitty, but he expected somehow that this thing was going to give him an A. I, I that disconnect is just I, I, I don't understand it. Well, this is also the guy who I think it's like you said, had his lawyer ask the judge to take him off of probation at the hearing where he it was going to be revoked because he violated it. Right. So you know, he doesn't uh, understand. Just to clear things up, I mean, a lot of people are concerned about him getting off uh, lifetime supervised probation. You got to remember it's supervised. Um, he has to get the probation department to agree to that. So they have a, a an agreed upon motion to present to the judge. And then he's got to get the judge to agree to it. So he's got two stages. The idea that he can go to war with probation, he's, uh, seek out these reports that exonerate him, and then go in front of the judge and have a have a dogfight with probation and the, uh, and the judge is going to let him off probation is ludicrous. You want to win the side of your adversary first. And then go to the judge in lockstep and hoping that the judge is going to is going to believe what probation says. That he's going to trust what probation says. If they say no, they'll let him off. I don't know of any case where somebody brought a uh, motion for early termination of probation without probation's assent. So he's got to play nice with these guys. And he's an idiot. He went adversary in this thing. And uh, I don't know. It's going to set him back a little bit more, I think. <clears throat> Well, it's like he thought he could go directly o over probation's head. Like yeah, he was going to prove things. that, yeah, that they're corrupt or something and and get a judge on his side. And I think it's safe to say that the judge judges usually listen to probation. And they're, they're going to take their side. That's, that's probation's strictly, job. Strictly. Mm -hmm. They would never go against probation's well, uh, uh, recommendations. The problem is with people like, like law. They take probation as being <clears throat> their enemy, just like they do with law enforcement. Obviously, it's more understandable with law enforcement because they're just doing the job. They're trying to protect, you know, they're trying to stop laws being broken to protect people. But they view them as their enemy because obviously they're stopping people from living, from making the decisions that they want to make. It's the same with probation, really. They're there to make sure yep. that they're abided by the conditions and whatnot. But people like law they just, they don't view it as a necessary entity. It's, they're my enemy. They're stopping me from doing this. They're stopping me from doing that. But Lon takes it to another level. It's like that call with Casey. I cannot remember which one it was, but he was coming up with these stories about how the polygrapher was wrong and all oh, there's a, this huge conspiracy. Everybody's against him. That person's got it in for him. He doesn't like this person, that person. They've all misquoted him. They've all done it wrong. It's like... It, it's the it's the overall sort of um, thing that Lon's famous for the most is turning. I think you said it once, Tiffany. He has this ability to blame every other person for his misfortunes. Of course, probation are going to get it. You know how could they not in this scenario? Even like I said, in a lot of cases, probation are the enemy. It's why it's such a difficult job. Um, but with him. Yeah, I could imagine. I, I would love to see one of those meetings or listen to it. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> shit, he must come out. I, I, for one, am glad the way he is. I'm glad he's fighting probation. I'm glad he's not clever enough uh, because we know how dangerous he, he is. Uh, he's not clever enough to play the game. 
uh, to get off of any kind of uh, supervision. Uh, I'm glad he's this stupid. Um, this is uh, this. These are all. These are all. His stupidity is protecting society. Yeah, and, and giving us entertainment. So we have to give him some yes. kind of credit. Yes, it's I'm an glad indirect okay, credit right. we've got to give him. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was listening to the uh, I Deserve a Chance call where Tiffany, and I've got to say this, I don't like to compliment Lockhart very much on these things, but um, just a joke. That was a masterclass in fucking with Lorne. That I, I fucking love that call so much. You've got him jumping through hoops. You just expertly expose his idiocy. And how many times did you tell him? Because there's this scenario where he you got him away from Winnie, right? And it's all very mm-hmm. silly. And he's like, I, I deserve a chance. And he, like, you explain it to him so many times. Listen, you're ugly as fuck. You're a sex offender. You've got no money. Fuck off. No chance. And he's like... It, even when you think he's might have got the message, he keeps coming back. I deserve a chance. Give me a chance. So we got a chance then. Can we be friends now? Yeah. Okay. Ten minutes later, give me another chance. I'm like, Ugh! fucking hell, dude. It's like he, he's like well, a dog with a bone. He never, ever, ever lets go of it. He'll never let go of probation of my enemy. He'll never let go. I need a chance. It's kind of there's a part of me that thinks I wish I could take some of that energy and incorporate it within myself in a positive light. You could be prime minister. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. He does he does always go back to the same themes that are already in his mind, and he did that with Jamie as well. You know, they weren't together for a majority of the time that they were speaking, right? Wouldn't you say? And from even during those moments, it was still going back to his jealousy with other guys and talking about how they were going to be together. It's, it's always the same. What, what it was the same thing with thing Paula. With it was, mm-hmm. no, I'm sorry. It was, it was just it was, gonna say, I love you. So you owe it to me. To... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such bizarre yeah. reasoning that, isn't it? Isn't that like the reasoning well, of like a, a proper predator that, isn't it? It's just so, so bizarre. Yeah. 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 You owe him because he loves you. It makes he, one time he said, uh, he said to Jamie, uh, who's the guy that wants to marry you? Who's the guy that yeah. bought you the ring? Well, I often mm-hmm. wonder what if he was told, you know, there's another guy who wants to marry her and there's another guy who bought her a ring. Okay. So how do we, how do we figure this out? I wonder what <laughs> right. he would say in that situation. Well, you know, I recently listened to a call where he was, talking to Casey and it was referring to text messages that he was sending to Jamie during a possible tornado that may have been oh, yeah. on the way I to her. That, and <laughs> not he only does he get, not, right. I know not only does he flirt, which he's, he's so um, horrified by when he's having to read that back, but he also said something like your heart and your pussy will always be mine. Tell your boyfriend. Yeah, tell your boyfriend. Yeah. Right, because she was dating somebody else at the time. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah, it, it's it's to me it's as disgusting. Um, I don't know. There's so, there's so much disgusting about this guy, but um, what is it? Uh, the uh, the the front wedgie. I mean, who thinks of that? Right. I mean, that sounds like it's, that sounds like sexual battery. The front right up her slit. Slit, right? Yeah. I mean, he's such strange, strange ideas. Yeah. Um, and what's bizarre is these strange ideas and strange inclinations. They seem to go for infinity. It's like you've got the chat log. You wouldn't think there'd be anywhere to go from there. But just think about all the crazy one-liners and the crazy antics and the crazy scenarios and the stupid rages and the. It, these her brain schemes he comes up with, he's like an endless source of fuck uppery, isn't it? It, it? I've just it's just bizarre, and I, I've kind of, I'm kind of glad we've touched upon that a little bit because it helps me to justify spending this amount of time fucking talking about him, you know? Because <laughs> as we've mentioned before, some of my friends think I'm fucking insane, and they're probably right. I'm not going to deny it, you know. I think Lon's actually onto something when he calls us a bunch of weirdos, but 
luckily for us, he's he's in his own category. Um, you know, it's 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 just it's fucking every the way he looks at everything is just odd. I think that's part of the draw for us because it's we can't quite understand it, so we're trying to figure it out. And I think most of us involved in this. He, 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 there's certain patterns you could pick up on. Uh, the, the, the pussy will always belong to me. That, that that similar thing. All of his sex stories involve, you know, first of all, fucking over another guy, and the girl was all over him. It's never, you know, I, I approached this girl. Never, never let us know what his technique was. And let us never let us know what his game was. You know how he did it. It's only because as soon as he walked in, it's like they they saw Elvis Presley and jumped all over him. You know that all of the story. It's always the same pattern. You know, but, and also let's not forget, just in case we need to emphasize this, your pussy will always belong to me. Even if someone who'd had sex with a a girl on numerous occasions and they were engaged, that'd be a strange thing to say. This is a guy mm-hmm. who's never even fucking touched one. Uh, probably, it's like never even mind the girl he's talking about. What fucking yeah, I agree. Yeah. And he was saying. <laughs> To tell her boyfriend that, tell your boyfriend that you have sex with regularly, that your heart and pussy will always belong to me. He's never been within a thousand miles of either body part, (laughs) of any body part of her, but they belong to him, not the man she's sleeping with. Yeah. I mean, uh, if it's not clear that he's a virgin, I mean, uh, you know, based on that kind of conversation. uh, Go down that. (laughs) Rub it all I'm in sorry. Chat. I'm sorry. There's an <laughs> elephant in the room here. I, I like pointing at it. Well, there's going to be another elephant in the room soon. We'll talk about that. And speaking of which, we might as well um, we might as well jump to uh, page. I think we're on page five, and I'm pretty sure Miss Lockhart um, started to um, talk about the look assessment. Now we might as well just go over that again. Um, I'll read this bit anyway, and we'll see if we can... Hang on. Uh, during the interview, Mr. Amazon spoke about sex furniture. Yeah, yeah, we've been over that. I think we've been over this part as well, but it's been several weeks since we've done it, so... Um, I'll just say a few hellos to the chat. We've got Cat G, hi, Cat, and uh, Clark Vader. Uh, Bees Knees, hello. Um, Kimmy Kimmy, it's quite a few people in, considering this was kind of a last-minute advert as well so yeah i didn't get my shit together today so i'm sorry for uh springing up on people at the last minute um anyway so it Not says good. here i think you can see it on your screen guys now have you have you all got it um there yeah yeah okay uh the look assessment suggests mr armstrong right what's a look assessment let's just clarify uh it, i think it's his own self-assessment yeah yeah i think if they show him a bunch of pictures and he um says whether or not he's attracted to yeah they haven't got a in that picture they haven't got like a wire attached to his dick have they basically unfortunately i don't think so right so um i suppose what that brings us nicely how much can we actually trust his look assessment because if it's from law because i suppose the question is is Lorne going to deliberately try to? Is is Lorne going to deliberately try to um, uh, cheat this test? If it, yeah, yes. I think no, so. I think the results nah. show that he infected. <laughs> but I suppose I don't mean that he's not got that type of character. I suppose the question I'm asking is. Is he in a position where he's going to be strong-willed enough to do that? So, in other words, he's got a couple of professionals there. So, for instance, why would he even bring up the nine-year-old thing? It was like a ridiculous that attempt to lie. The, yeah, but what I mean is he kind of landed himself in it there inadvertently, didn't he? Well, the yeah. way he explains well, it is they asked him what was bothering him. Something general like that. <laughs> That's what popped That was different. Head. That was at, at the polygraph test. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least she's pretty good on the mute button though sorry guys that's all right um sorry. You carry on amanda james um i'll try that was at the polygraph test he failed the test for for whatever reason i think it was looking at media um for sexual gratification uh, regarding minors or something and after he failed it 
I guess they said, well, Lauren, is anything bothering you? Because he failed the test, not just like in general. Is there anything bothering you? It was regarding the test. Yeah, I know. And he decided to to bring up this nine year old girl. How could he think that they would take that any other way in the context of <laughs> it's that situation? Fucking bizarre, isn't it? It he is. He thought that he so, thought that that would that would make him um, innocent looking. Um, that he cares a hero as yeah. much yes. as they do about children. You know, he's so stupid. <laughs> not not not. Oh my God, probation. What's bothering me? Well, I can't live life i don't have a first amendment rights anymore i don't have fourth amendment rights anymore i can't go anywhere i have to stay in the state i can go on and on where do you know he wants to talk about a nine-year-old girl <laughs> uh that's what do you call that uh andrew virtue signaling uh well uh, yeah but but like it's such it it's like he he couldn't have said anything worse at that point to try and exonerate himself it's like he thought he'd try and be clever but there's obviously something on his mind, and he's thought to bring that up rather than just not say anything. It's fucking strange. I know. He had to but say something. But he's got something. so much to complain about. That's what I'm saying. He could but say he had anything. To, he had to say something, though, because could he, he not failed have to just that said question. Nothing? Uh, well, could he not have just said, oh, I don't know? <laughs> well, he could have, but I think that they they would have possibly dug further or whatever. And, you know, sometimes I think the I, the I don't the I don't know answer is difficult he's not in a position to say i don't know or feel that he can i think he's probably in a situation where he needs to have an answer for everything or at least that's what he thinks anyway and also so if he says i don't know then they're not going to get off of that they're going to need him to come up with brownie points he's trying to make up for his fuck-ups you know well Uh, i think i think what he's 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 trying to make it like yeah, I did see a young girl and there's other people that can use her image for sexual purposes and that bothers me. So that yeah. must be the reason why I failed the question. It's just made me But realize... what he doesn't understand is he's saying if it titillates me, it'll titillate other p- pedophiles. That's what he's saying. Yeah, and what's what's a regular pattern of Lorne when he speaks to you uh, in some of them calls, Tiffany, is, well, all of those people on the internet, I bet all of them are child predators too. It's like he tries to um, exonerate himself. I keep saying that word today, don't I? Um, by pointing the finger at everybody else, like everybody, all of those people in the in the Cod, Church of Cod, all those dumbasses. I bet they're all predators. You know what I mean? He always he tries does to it do all that. The time. So I think it's part of that, isn't it? I'm protecting people. I'm well, protecting it is, of kids. course. Because he's not going to be the one who's going to say, yeah, I actually did do that. So he's got to make it something where he's not the one who's doing anything wrong. Everyone else who's looking at her in a sexual way is doing something wrong and that bothers him. And so that's why, and and I think that's, this is what Lorne really holds on to. And this is his argument against these type of assessments, this entire evaluation, everything he didn't agree with, he's going to say that it's wrong. Because he, you cannot know what's actually in his head. Yes, that's what he holds on to yeah. every single time. Even with him going to the house, you know, you can say, "Well, Lauren, all of the evidence is showing that you were counting down the days. You were telling her when you were leaving. You were telling her what you were going to bring her. You drove to the house. You drove up there. You went inside. But oh no, I really didn't want to go though. And that's the one part that can't have actual evidence." Everything else does, right. but that can't. And he holds on to that. Right. You can't prove what yeah. was in my head. You can't mm-hmm. prove what I was thinking. Even though he told her everything he was thinking, he yeah. shut it on and the phone call. And went out of his <laughs> way to say that as well. <laughs> he <Yeah>. did. <laughs> and his actions, you know, that, that reflected his thoughts, you know? That's, yes, that's the thing. exactly. Exactly. I his said this excuses. before. In, in every civil case, in every criminal case, you have to prove intent. Some intent, whether it be negligence, whether it be uh, intentional recklessness, whatever it is, you have to prove that. Of course, you, of course you don't have to get inside the do a Vulcan mind belt to, to find out what's going on in the guy's head. You do that by looking at the circumstances, the evidence surrounding the actions, the behaviors, everything else. Mm-hmm. He's an idiot. You know, that's the last bastion of the scoundrel. They, all, they always say that, you know, you don't know what's going on in my head. I, I live my life, not you. Well, shit. You know, I, I think I know you better than you do. 
anyway and and the other thing about this report is they 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 seem to be focused on something much much bigger than whether he's a risk to society they're looking at his his ability to engage in and uh, sustained relationships in general you know and they're they're evaluating you know how he looks at people it's almost like a, a sociological study on him you know how he how he interacts with other people and that's one of the, his, the biggest problems that they have with him because other predators who come in may have a network of friends and may have a network of families who still like him whatever and they just have to deal with that one issue that they're dealing with lauren it's a, an entire hodgepodge of how to socialize the guy to begin with and then say stay away from kids by the way you know does that make sense yeah no absolutely it it does um i think that they are trying to understand him a little bit more good luck, good luck and with that. that is true that is true um but i think that, that that's paragraph, definitely a part of it that. yeah exactly yeah. yeah they're trying to understand and i i think that they're looking at also the things that have happened and the relationships that he does get involved in you know he's been bringing yeah. his internet friends and girlfriends to them for years and every single time it's exploded in his face every time <laughs> they cannot stop him from engaging in this so they have to try to understand i guess like what what exactly is going on with this person like is he able to to know what it is to have any healthy boundaries what is it like for him to have friendships how does he see other people right right it's yeah. as basic as that mm -hmm. it really is he's got nothing he's got he's got no point of reference he's got no, no experience no no history of it i mean it's like he just fell from the sky an alien and now he's got to somehow um uh, integrate well, if himself. lon was an alien it'd be a lot easier to explain and we'd we'd kind of it would be it'd be like ah right i get it now you know what i mean that's what it'd be like i fucking knew it there was something there's something weren't right um Right, so this, this paragraph, the second bottom, um, it says, the look assessment suggests Mr. Armstrong is not primarily attracted to pubescent children. Uh, we, we have been over this. This suggests that his use of adolescent girls for master, masturbatory fantasies, is masturbatory fantasies is more about his idea, ideas of the relationship rather than the aspects of the body. Now, is there any point paying any real respect to this because it's kind of coming from him to get what i mean um well i well i think that 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 part is is something to pay attention to um because yeah. it isn't just the body you know i think you can look at other predators where it's very clear um, what they're, they're after primarily. And I think it adds another layer of interest when you look at Lorne's involvement with them, because he talks, he does talk a lot about sex, of course, and his penis and all of that, but he does talk about you know any evidence of that. I think that, yeah, I don't know what the word count is in the chat <laughs> lock, but it's quite high. Well, I think um, you've got it in for him, Luca. And possibly, but I think, I think that it's also really it interesting chance. how he romanticizes, um, his relationships into something that's going to be all consuming and all loving, you know, I will love you more than anyone ever could. And well, you know, you. you're, he has, well, under certain circumstances, yes, he will, <laughs> reasonable. but <laughs> reasonable, yes. <laughs> but I, well, I, and like he, it, real quick, he fantasized. He said he fantasized about bringing girls home to meet his mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think that's true. Mm -hmm, I, I think that too. is true. I think that he's never had that opportunity. His family has never seen him dating, um, even casually. You know, hanging around and and going out on dates and stuff. He's never done that. And I think. That is something that he looks to. In fact, I think that he looks to one of his brothers who happened to get married to the person that he dated in high school as the ideal situation. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very, very yeah, jealous he of that. that. He contradicts that all the time by saying, you know, 
how when he was doing his one night stands, he didn't want to get he didn't want to get married. He, he that's no, that's a lie. He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. That is I know. Absolutely. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no. but the reality, but the reality is, is that that is what he wants. He wants that relationship that you see in Taken Abroad. You know, mom yeah. finds out no, that you're getting married. Oh, we're gonna have yeah. we're gonna have all the girls over and we're gonna plan the wedding tonight and you get out of here, <laughs> young man, you know, and all that really stupid, like clingy, gross, you know, type of mother, uh sister yeah. or daughter in law relationship. He that's what he Slightly wants. On the heavy side. Yeah. He, yeah, he wants Well, I think that. his it's relationship in the creature was even his, his relationship in the creature was even more illuminating. Uh, he's you remember that Amanda. He's opening doors for her a million times. He's kissing her every <laughs> second. <laughs> he's in there in grave oh, danger. God, remember that shit? Yeah, that's what he thinks love looks like. Is, <laughs> it's it, like... It, the constant telling each other that you love them and kissing them and telling them you would die for them and you're carrying my baby. I'll do anything for you and our baby. <laughs> it's all from cheesy, you know, teen romance oh, oh, movies. Oh. You just brought something up. Did you do you remember that call where he actually said um, he was thinking about adopting? I guess Jamie Amy's baby. How deluded <laughs> can you be? <laughs> what judge would sign off? Can you imagine I'm writing out your application form. Right. Is there anything that the court needs to know about? Yes, I'm a registered sex know. offender. <laughs> <laughs> like, where? How is he not thinking? First of all, he's got. First, he's got to get past probation in his idea to adopt a baby. I mean, there's absolutely no. I, it, it just blew my mind. It just tells me he has absolutely no awareness of his situation. No, oh, reality. Reality of his actual circumstances don't play a role in how Lauren daydreams about how he thinks things are going to go. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Pepsi Tate has just said, the creature was taken abroad was a masterpiece. You know what? In as far as, in the context of a Lauren sort of saga, just looking at it from that perspective, taken abroad was a masterpiece because the book should have been called I Never Meant to Do It, which is so <laughs> fucking yeah. great because that's Lauren's whole narrative for the whole sting. No, thing. no, it's, it's better than that. It. It, it's not my fault. You know, that, 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 I think that's what the name is. Because at the end, we were supposed to feel sorry for the serial killer. I will never yeah. forget that bit, Tiffany, where you read, and um, <laughs> what was the name of it? Amber looked at uh, Aaron with pity, and you were, oh, fuck off, dude. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> I was through the, the book. The with it, they went to his funeral, and, and Aaron... The Trevor and his mom walked in hand in hand. I mean, that's his dream. Can you imagine that? Like mean, that situation. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter that uh, that uh, Aaron tried to kill you. You know, you still got to go to his funeral. And oh, it, absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. Well, there was, it wasn't his fault, was it? It wasn't his fault. He lost it in the field. He we lost don't know it. what it was he lost though. He Even lost after it. the whole book. <laughs> he lost it. And then also I guess he believed in something in order to to go there. Remember? What he, did he believe he, in though? He, well, I don't know, but he said for what to fight for what he believes in. We never found out that part. <laughs> <laughs> so the two the biggest biggest thing thing is, that is with corn in it. That's what he believes in. Well the, the mom things. stuff in Taken Abroad was the most interesting to mm -hmm. me um the name of that, mom that right just aaron's mom but that's how lauren is in real life tiffany do you remember a call you were casey and <laughs> lauren was crying he was drunk and crying because you never had a mom i want to give you my mom do you remember that? <laughs> i do it was the stupidest fucking thing i've ever heard, heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he it's sobbing I want to give you my mom. Because my mom <laughs> will love you. <laughs> and Tiffany, he said Meanwhile, his mom like... wants nothing to do with his internet friends. He's giving her away. <laughs> he said something to him like, hey, I'm Lauren, mom. will you hold me against your breast like a mother would? <laughs> Me? Really fucking my mother will crying. breastfeed you? Yeah, <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Oh, God. And he said the same thing to me. Way, my I... mom will love you. 
I'm going to bring you into a real family. He said it to every fucking girlfriend he's had. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and now his mother wants sure. none of this. And We've no, heard his, his mom, mom on the phone. His Remember mom when he put Ramona on the phone yeah. with his mom? And his his mom's like, Juan, I'm not dealing with your bullshit. <laughs> Lauren's desperately trying to get her to have a heart-to-heart with Ramona. Yeah. He said he did the same thing with Vanessa and Lee Parker. He put her on mm-hmm. the phone with his mom nine times or something. Mm-hmm. And he used that as an excuse for, you know, how dare she, how could she break my heart? I let her talk to my mother. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He he puts that mom up on a pedestal. Doesn't act like it, though. He just says that he puts her there. I remember, yeah, I think it. it was even that I uh, I deserve a chance call. And he was babbling on about how much he loved his mum. And you were like, yeah, because you see your mum all the time, don't you, Lauren? You're so good to her. You spend so much time with her. He's go, well, I try to. <laughs> it's like, oh, fucking hell, dude. <laughs> well, remember so, the... Your mom thinks- Sorry. Well, the, the um, what's it called? The wrecking ball call, the Mother's Day call. Yeah. Yes. Screamed for about yes. three or four hours. I just sent you this this call recently, Andrew. I think. Mm. Um, you never heard wrecking for ball for several Andrew? hours about. How... No, I don't think oh I don't think God. he had heard it before. I sent it to him, but I don't know. I don't oh, know if you listened to the him. whole thing. It's a long one. But he he felt like he was really justified in not spending time with his mom on Mother's Day because some woman that he had never met in his life, he didn't even know her last name. He just talked to her on the phone. She's in the hospital, like in a coma practically, after a severe swordfish injury. And a man brought her <laughs> coffee, and that destroyed his Mother's Day. That's, yeah. Is that, is that what the accident was? I not spend time with mom today. Yeah, yeah it was swordfish. Right? <laughs> They're more common than you might think. Oh, Andrew, you're in for a treat, <laughs> yeah, <folks>. those are <laughs> Oh my god! But that um... shows you where his mother is, and <laughs> on his list of important people in his life. Sort of fish accident. That's fucking brilliant. Get home and get drunk and scream at everybody on the phone <laughs> instead of hang out with his mom. <laughs> Well, you know what was funny, though, is that he said that he was going home to build her some kind of a stand for... Snack stand. Things. Yeah, snack, snack stand, stand for the for the yard yeah. sale. You got to put those dynamites somewhere. That's right, the dynamites. Wow. Fucking hell. Yeah. We've not, we've, we've not even... I think we've, I've read two lines of the fucking report so far. Uh, so anyway, I think I just to, to tie that all together, what we were just going over with, I think that the idea of the relationship is something that is added on to the physical aspect of what Lauren's attracted to. Yeah, because there's obviously, there's obviously a side to Lauren, in case anybody needs real, uh, reminded of this, that's he's a sick guy. You, you know, we should never forget that, and I'm pretty sure we don't. Sometimes we get caught up in the humor and we do forget about what this guy actually is. But, like, it's quite obvious in the chat, he's not just lost perspective. That's why it's frustrating when he keeps saying, "I, you know, I I, I was messed up. There's so much more to it than that. And, and you know, count the hers down there, stick your finger in, blah, blah, blah. And um, there's obviously something else going on here. But what I think why we find Lorne interesting as well is because he does have this fantasy of the relationship, meeting the mom, and because he's so naive, he's never experienced it, of course. He, he's totally unaware that the Disney romance doesn't really exist. Sorry to break anybody's heart out there, but, you know, the the perfect person isn't going to fix you, just in case you thought that. Um, but I'm sure you don't. Um, so uh, it would be... Helpful to explore why he chose to th- p- those people to think about while masturbating and what he found arousing about them. Hmm. I mean, that's just their thoughts, isn't it? Not um, maybe open that may open the discussion to his ideas about relationships. Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I that is interesting. Look what they're referring to is the admission that he was thinking about girls from high school um, mm-hmm. while right. he was masturbating. And 
that is really interesting to think about because Lauren, in, in, he told Casey, um, well, first he said, well, I thought about him from high school because that's all that I all that I know that they look like. You know, I, I, I didn't know them as adults. But in the next breath, he says that one of the girls he thought about, he saw her when she was 30 years old. So he still chose the 14 year old image of her. Right. Not, not the third. And I, I can't argue that. There is a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, it may be possible to use his relationship pattern with the. In fact, do you want to read this, Tiffany? You're a lot more eloquent than I am, if you don't mind. Sure. It may be possible to use his relationship pattern with those in group, with his probation officer and with treatment providers to begin to explore his problems with relationships. Instances of disingenuousness, deception, or attempts to keep emotional distance can be explored and understood. Developing an understanding of why he chooses women who are unavailable will be important. He states that his presence on the internet keeps him from being able to find romantic partners. This idea should be challenged, especially if there are others whose sex offenses were publicized and who have been able to meet dating partners. He should be encouraged. I, can I, I, I'm sorry. When, I, yeah, I applaud sure. that, that. We talk about this all the time, about whether the catfish are distracting him from creating real victims around him. Uh, he's actually saying that. But I, I don't know whether it's true or not, but he uses excuses. But I like to believe this. I like to believe that the catfish are, are protecting the uh, Cornville region. Um, I think that the women in the area would have to know about his presence on YouTube in order to, in order to actually have that well, be true. Yeah. They, well, they, they, he'd have to disclose everything to any woman he meets. That's why he doesn't want to meet somebody in person. I, I, oh, I, sure. I absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. And, mm -hmm. and he's made mention of that too, of why he doesn't have friends. Um, why he hasn't become friendly with anybody that he works with. And he has said right. it's because of the obvious, you know, he has to tell them what happened. So certainly explaining that to any type of a woman um, that he would be interested in dating, that would be dropping a huge bomb on them. It would be over at that moment, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, right. Should we delve into the final page? Uh, yeah, so um, the last part of the, the page five, he should be encouraged to look beyond his victim stance and explore how that allows him to not take responsibility. For this to be a successful strategy, he will need to have a positive relationship with his providers and believe that they're trying to help him rather than simply tell him what to do. A strong therapeutic alliance will be critical. This may be difficult given Mr. Armstrong's difficulty trusting treatment providers. I think that that just highlights perfectly why Lorne isn't successful in um, the sex offender class that we jokingly call rape class. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I would go as far as saying he would never be successful in that class for as long as he lives. I think no. that for whatever reason, we don't know why. Uh, Lorne is just, his brain just isn't designed that way. He can't. Well, whether it's a will thing, I know we clash on this sometimes, whether it's a kind of, uh, you know, the, the sort of symptom of narcissistic personality disorder, or whether he just chooses to just ignore the plain and obvious because it's easier that way. You know, it's like everybody's his enemy, you know. Um, it's like we t talked about earlier, didn't we, about him making, you know, everybody's out to get him. There's a conspiracy, everybody's got it wrong, rather than... Maybe they're onto something, Lorne. Have you ever considered that? But obviously not. No, that would that would take awareness on his part. And he doesn't want to be that guy. You know, he doesn't want to be the monster that everybody's looking at and following and keeping tabs on and telling him he can't do stuff, taking his computer away, saying how he can't talk to the people that he wants to. He can't have his YouTube channel. He can't do his cooking class. I mean, so, of course, in his opinion, um, they're just coming down on him. They're just busting his balls. 
They're all, everyone's against him. Even the attorneys, when it doesn't work out in his favor, it's the attorney's fault. And if you remember in the hearing, the, the judge in the, in the last part was talking about how good of, of probation officers Bryce and Maria are. Yeah, that's right. So, I, I mean, he, Lorne just, he completely messes it. He's not even on the same, having the same conversation, even that everyone else around him is having. It's interesting. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think and... you're, you're right when you say that his brain just doesn't work in the way that would allow him to take any kind of responsibility or accountability for the things he's done throughout this um, evaluation. It's full of excuses and reasons why the things that he has done are not his fault. He, I mean, it starts out with, um, he hasn't had, you know, any adult relationships and it's because of Paula and you hear him talk to Casey about, um, you know, how his, his, stepdad didn't have any porn magazines in the house and that somehow affected him and was traumatic so that was dale's fault something was dale's fault for not having i don't know vhs porno playing all around the house or having sex with his mom where he could hear um <laughs> look at the the his lawsuits they're they're full of reasons why it's everybody else's fault he was vulnerable because of what his family did to him and then the decoy zeroed in on that vulnerability and and took advantage of him nothing is ever his fault and i think he truly believes that yeah I that do even too. the things that he has done wrong it's because somebody else did something wrong to him and when i'm listening to the tiffany calls where she gets him to explain or say the words i am a predator or i did want to go there he, he, he doesn't believe what he's saying. He will always, mm -hmm. in the back of his mind, and this isn't to diss what you said to him because nobody could have, nobody can get what we're looking for out of him. Um, he still clings to that because he can say all that. He can say, I was a predator. I said all those things. But ultimately, he will always cling to that. I was messed up at the time. Other people did this to me, made me behave that way. Because what we were saying earlier about nobody can disprove his thoughts, we can't. 100% disproved that. We know it's bullshit, but we can't scientifically, and neither can the... Nobody can, unless we had some We can of... assume it, though, with him. Oh, we oh, can assume it all that. 100%. Of course we can. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's... I, I, I think it, it's... I agree with, uh, with... I think it was Tiffany. I, it's even more basic than that. Um, he doesn't understand certain things. He doesn't... He 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 th has these ideas about relationships and interactions that that are weird and fantasy. Like the idea when when uh, Casey was talking about how can you not know how many clits there are, and he said, "Well, we never had a sat down and had a conversation about body parts after." So he was serious about that. He thinks that people will do that. They sit mm -hmm. around and, and talk about their, you know, hey, you know, did I hit your number two clitoris? You know, you know, tell me what is that area again? You know, he thinks those conversations happen. You know, so he doesn't even have the basic tools. Uh, I, I, I'm shocked, gobsmacked that he <laughs> he graduated uh, uh, high school. I really am. Well, I don't know what the the education was like or the sex ed, I should say, back then. Not yeah. existent by well, the sounds of it. Yeah, the, there might not have. Yeah, there might not have been. Well, how do we all know. learn sex, really, seriously? I mean, with our peers, right? With, uh, sure. you know, maybe we see uh, see things in media or whatever it is. You know, I don't think you know the t the days of you know your parents sitting you down and you know and having the birds and the bees talk with you like that is is you know I think it's a little outdated. Uh, especially, but I think you pick it up before they have that conversation. You usually say, come on, Ma, I don't want to hear from you. Of course I know that. You know, kind of, sure. da, da, da. So you, you already have that. But without friends or any network at all, he has to make up these situations in his own mind. He doesn't have basic knowledge of anything uh, that has anything to do with interacting with other human beings. He has no clue. Well, this is why I'm thinking that there's, you know, we've always... <sighs> Is there some kind of mental problem that prohibits that from happening? 
I know people that I've been close to that have always been like, not like in, from a sex offender stance, but have never been able to form any kind of proper relationship with anybody. I don't know what it is that causes it, but some people are like that. Um, Lon's obviously like that. I, we t- I don't think he's ever had like a true friendship. We know he's admitted he's never had a girlfriend. We we know that's true. Um, there's always dysfunctional relationships <laughs> in certain people's lives. There's never anything that works. Is there? Like everywhere. Like I mean, I think that's why he glorifies the relationship with his mother. But even that's dysfunctional. He says it's the greatest thing yeah. ever. But like the first time I ever heard Lon talking to mother Gwen was in the lawn. There's a butthole call. And he's going Ralph and Laurie, you pieces of shit. I was quite shocked at how he was talking to her. I mean, he was a bit drunk and it was highly amusing. And she ended up putting the phone down on him. <laughs> oh, that's your, that's your dear mother, is it? Yeah. Oh, that was a that great guy. phone call. Or, or the phone call where he kept... Really was that the one where he's, he kept her car? That was the same call, right? I think yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was it was okay. remarkable. That I think, in fact, <laughs> didn't, um, didn't uh, Sloth Cat do an animation of that? I think so. Um, I know. Well, I know that he's done with calls calls with Lauren and his mom, but I can't remember exactly which one they were. No, it might have uh, been. Yeah, it was uh, my car, no. you know. <laughs> Agrabah. I fucking love that call so much. <laughs> and and me and Shin, <laughs> me and Shins, and two hundred two a couple of others had the uh, honor of hearing Mother Gwen speak on behalf of Lauren, and it was. It was such a bizarre thing to listen to, wasn't it, dude? Because we were shocked that Lorne had the audacity to get his mother, his elderly mother, up there to say that. And it, there was such an I entitlement. I was fixated on Lorne during her speech. Uh, yeah, I, but... He was way he just broke down. And her speech was so wooden. And it was like she was reading, you know... A um, cue card. Exactly. That, like, reading from, like, a, a screen, you know. Yeah, and everybody else in the courtroom is going, what is she saying? What is... What's, what's that about a lottery? What? And and you and you see Lauren has two dogs. away, shaking convulsions with tears, <laughs> and nobody else was moved by Mama Gwen but Lauren. It was just a weird <laughs> he started weird crying, did it? Yeah, I was That's listening what he lost to it. the to the. I was listening to that to the reading of the court transcripts recently, and Lauren was crying. As if his mother had just gotten up there and delivered this incredibly heartfelt we speech heard about her we, it, relationship <laughs> with her yep. son. And all she said was basically, my sister and I have been paying his fucking bills and we don't <laughs> want to anymore. I have to drive 20 miles every day to feed this cocksucker's dogs because he got himself put back in prison. Can you let him go? So I don't ha- I'm too fucking old for this. And Lauren is crying oh, like a baby. <laughs> Yeah, wow. He gives water. <laughs> he went through the whole thing. Oh, I, mean, I, I love your Lauren interpretation is- of that speech, Amanda James. That's brilliant. Well, and then Lauren, it's his turn to speak, and he said, I wish I had spoken before my mom. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Who stands up in a courtroom and says, Jesus, like that? That is so ridiculous. Andrew, doesn't it sound like Amanda was there? <laughs> oh, I, I just, I, I wish she kind of had been, you know. Just... I know, yeah. Uh, we need Lon to fuck up again, <laughs> don't we? But, but, no, no, nothing will ever recapture that moment. It was purely, it was truly glorious. Um, <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Um, right, we're fucking, we've got two huge bits here. We might have to split this into another part, you know. This is crazy. Um, Holy shit. I, yeah, um, just quickly the, the the last sentence of that um the top paragraph a strong therapeutic alliance will be critical this may be difficult given mr Armstrong's difficulty trusting treatment providers we always say that um of course it's it's the same belong and anybody is that treatment doesn't work unless there's cooperation from all parties like this is why he's still stuck like how many people have tried to help him? Even the catfishes have tried to point him in some kind of direction. I think it's because you're like so frustrated at this fucking guy. You're just thinking, just dude, the water's there, drink it. Um, but mm-hmm. he, he he just there's no 
he thinks he's cooperating. Well, he doesn't think he's cooperating. He doesn't think he needs to cooperate, does he? There's no. There can't be a fully. Uh, well, it's worse than that. They, they haven't earned his earned the right for him to cooperate. They haven't earned uh, his respect. That's what it sounds like. You know, it's. You know, I'm not going to cooperate because I don't like you. You got to make me like you first. You got to be a young, pretty therapist for me to. Open up. I, I think he use he views his treatment incorrectly. Um, he sees it as something different. Like when he would talk about his conversations with Allie, they were all about Ramona, and that he all he yeah. talks about in these treatment sessions is his are the problems with his catfish girlfriend, and that's not what is important in his that's life. Allie's fault. And I'm sure that's Allie's fault. I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, well, yeah, you would think she would try to redirect him. Well, I think but we her know purpose, where his focus was. Her purpose was to talk about his alcohol and what is causing right. him to drink. And so at that time, Lauren's talking about Ramona because he's using her as his reason for drinking their mm -hmm. dysfunctional relationship. Yeah. So. She, you know, she'll talk about that. But I think for Lauren, therapy is supposed to be warm and nurturing. You know, he wants somebody who's going to sit there and listen to him, watch him cry and tell him that it's okay. And that is not the therapy that he needs, unfortunately, for Lauren. Mm -hmm. He needs yeah. he needs somebody who is going to... Um, work through everything with him, him. in a clinical yeah. way. He cannot, you know, not Fly with him. by not cuddling. I think, I think in order for treatment, um, as far as getting results that can be documented, not necessarily that it's going to help Lorne because he's not on, on the same level, because like you said, you know, therapy has to be with somebody who wants the treatment, who's interested in their own, development and getting better where they're going to want that critical feedback, you know, all the negative stuff. That's what somebody is going mm. to want to hear when they're really interested and he's not. So I think in order for him to get the type of, or, or for therapy to get the type of documented results for Lauren, as far as probation is concerned and the court is concerned, I think it has to be done in a way sort of like with this, um, with this psychologist, someone who's going to be able to kind of manipulate Lorne to get him to mm -hmm. talk about things that he doesn't quite know what he's talking about, you know, say giving him them the answers without him really realizing it, because you can't ask Lorne direct questions. He will not answer them properly. And so it's kind of like when they, when they are doing you know, types of personality tests and other tests too, um, whether they're testing somebody for narcissism, for example, um, it's a way of asking questions and knowing what those answers will be because you have that education behind you. You have the experience mm -hmm. behind you as well to know when somebody answers in a certain way, it's going to mean something. And that client isn't necessarily going to know that. And that's when you're going to get the real data, I think, on somebody like Lauren. Yeah, I, I wasn't joking when I said um, he will only work with a female therapist. He said oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, he absolutely. Had, I actually said that, he said that to Sam, too. He said mm -hmm. when Sam was talking about him being a therapist and he said, well, I got a real therapist. She's female, something to that extent. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think that could be overlooked. I mean, I, I think that's huge. I mean, you can't even get into the substance of what he's saying without getting past the, you know, the superficial aspect that he's looking at. You know, you got to erase that. You got to put you can't give him a female. Uh, if you are give him someone who's much older or his age or something like that, that he, he will not idealize, you know, because otherwise his sessions are going to be about things that are going to that are going to try to impress this young therapist in front of him, this young female th mm -hmm. therapist in front of him. I, oh, yeah, even like, I even hate saying female these days, but um, yeah, it's too much of a distraction to get anywhere with him. Well, I think that he 
doesn't mind when he's ha- when he has a treatment provider who's a male. And, and I'm talking specifically about the class. When they are on his side, he's okay with them. When they're not, though, when they start to question him. Because remember, um, I'm trying to think of an example specifically. Um, I think when he, when he spoke about Jamie to, what's his name, Dwayne? Yeah, she said I'm on your team. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, yeah. and he was, and he was okay. Well, that alleged conversation, we don't really believe it, right? But he wasn't saying I can't talk to to Dwayne about this because I don't trust him or he's a guy. Like I think right. when it does come to a therapy, though, yes, I do agree that a, a female. Um, or, or somebody, you know, that Lauren, because I think it comes down to the nurturing thing. He, he doesn't find men to be nurturing. He looks, well, he I think looks that's what at they should the mom. I, I, I think I they should start from that. that basic, you know, yeah, ask absolutely. him why, why can't you talk to a man, you know, get him to admit that and, and get him to realize that that's not the, that's not the purpose of therapy. Maybe, maybe get, that's a way to start with him saying, look, why is it you're only interested in females? because you have a potential romantic attachment that you're looking for you realize that's not against you you know whatever give it to him but he's not but he's but he doesn't understand he doesn't understand that you can hit him between the eyes all that you want but he's still he's he's still not going to understand yeah it's going to bounce right off jen (laughs) (laughs) it's it's not going to go in there at all no definitely he he said you need a, a female therapist because females are gentle Mm-hmm. And that's what therapy is. It's it's yes. gentle. Yeah. I don't think he understands what therapy really means. And I agree. I, he thinks that a therapist should be a mother or, you know, mm-hmm. be motherly towards him. Mm-hmm. And men aren't aren't going to baby him, of course. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, unfortunately, well... <laughs> I wanted to give this next section quite a lot of uh, time, really, but I mean, I suppose we could run into next week if if it gets too much. Uh, so the next part is where it says Mr. Ha- Mr. Armstrong has reported a family history of uh, full of sexual abuse to the extent uh, which these generational patterns may have impacted Mr. Armstrong's interpersonal functioning is unknown. Now, I've never really wanted to talk about this. Um, for a number of reasons, it never felt quite right, and I know there might be a few people that are rolling their eyes, but hear me out a minute. So, obviously, this document was obtained because Lorne thought he was sending it to the love of his life. It's his fucking stupid problem, right? Because I've wrestled with this fact. However, and even Tiffany agrees with me on this, if these allegations are true, even someone like Lorne would deserve some kind of privacy. You're with me on that, Tiffany, aren't you, a little bit? Yeah, I think. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say he's not talking about himself being a victim of it. He's saying his family has a history of it. You know, and and there's there's a couple of stories that we know about. You know, between his sister, I guess, and his biological father, perhaps there's some something going on, and there's a lot of shit going on in that family. So, uh, yeah, I would think if this was about him personally, and again, maybe it's unpopular for me to say this, if this was about him personally, this is where they should be going with this therapy let's start unpacking that shit you know but he, i think he's just talking about his families is you know that's that that, that circulated uh, around his uh, around his existence as he was growing up you know he knew about these look, look at roy and um uh, roy's wife and you know although that's a little older i wouldn't call that abuse but sexual abuse but he doesn't call himself a victim here though well, this is this. Who knows what the conversation was? Because this is, and, and you're it's right. It, vague, doesn't, it, it doesn't come right out. It's very vague, and it, this is just a summary statement. Um, because they're giving their opinion of some of the things that that they spoke about. But I think that you know, when you're when you're talking about something like this, it also brings rise <laughs> to what? Uh, Sorry, Monkle, you closer. That's a that's a. Monk- that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cruel um, but true. Yes. But I, th- I think that you're also opening the door to allegations and things like that um, that can get that can get to be 
you know, crossing the line of things that are unfounded and, you know, Lauren's a liar and all of that. So yeah, it I think brings that other people into it. It does bring other people into it. And I think also, you know, when, you know, Lauren has brought up stories uh, from his past involving himself and, you know, I have a, I have a tendency to believe it. Mm. I think, I think things did happen. Yeah. You know what they are. I don't know. I don't know any of that. I don't know who they involved or anything, but I do think that things happened. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I don't know what you guys think. I don't believe that if anything did happen, like Lauren explained, it's any, it's impacted his behavior in mm-hmm. the way that he's maybe pointing to. So I, listen, I think that this, it, it, I don't think anybody can say for certain, even the, the even the um, experts, but um, the way that he sort of projects himself to Kayla and the other people, uh, you know, it's, it just doesn't, it, it can be explained without saying, oh, well, he got this done to him. And he, I mean, being part of a dysfunctional family, sure. You know, he, he was, there was a lot of issue. There's obviously some shaping that happened, some things that happened to him when he was very younger that shaped his, his psyche. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, it's a complicated issue, so I don't think there's any point going into it too much. What do you think, Commander James? Yeah. You've been quite quiet. I think quiet. if it was something serious, they would have delved into it more. I, I, I just think it, it deserved a lot more attention if they found it to be credible. About him. Um, I guess all, all I would say about it is that I, I agree with Tiffany, and I... I believe I'm inclined to believe it rather than disbelieve it. And like she said, we don't know, or I, I can't say exactly what happened, but I do think it's very likely that something happened. Um, but I agree with you too, Andrew, um, when you said that if something did happen, that wasn't the reason um, for what he, he tried to do to Kayla. I don't even think he realized there were a correlation between the two until like people say well why didn't he bring it up to chris as as you know as his excuse he's the amanda james story why didn't he say oh i was abused by my family or whatever and that's why i did this i don't think he even realized until he was in treatment class and maybe the provider said you know there's a link between um people who have been Mm -hmm. abused themselves and then they go on to abuse and that's when it kind of clicked in his head. And he was like, hey, wait a minute. I was abused, too. That's a, that's a great excuse. Yeah. Is, I'm a victim. Why and I, I could blame exactly. someone else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think that there's a connection between anything that happened with that and what he was up to. Yeah, I think it that's doesn't, it doesn't feel to... like it. That, I think that's all we need to say, really, isn't it? And and like I said, I don't, I, I don't want to really... I'm not interested in delving into it, what he said and... It's just nah. I'm not going to do that. Um, we don't really need to. We can talk about it in the context of this report. So it says it goes on further to say there are several ways the family history of abuse may be impacting Mr. Armstrong. First, the family system may not have taught Mr. Armstrong the kill the skills necessary for a loving interdependent relationship. I think that's quite obvious, isn't it? You know, I find it I find it fascinating to to see what he's like day-to-day adolescent, not necessarily ad- adolescent, but like early teenage years would have been. Because um, they're very difficult for anybody. I think we can all agree. I don't think anybody mm-hmm. had a perfectly great growing up time where everything went fantastic. And for somebody in Lon's position, he was struggling at school, you know, uh, getting... Uh, I think he was at least getting picked on by his siblings, um, you know, complete dysfunctional... A situation of course it's gonna i'm not making any excuses for Lorm at all because he is responsible for his own shit and getting it together and he hasn't but there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that that, that what happened to him and the way he was brought up when he was young shaped his psyche going into adult life I think. yeah i think it does for everyone um, but it's, it's everybody's responsibility to try and outgrow certain things and to, to better themselves, to learn, 
you know, to take responsibility for your inactions. Uh, he obviously has never done that. Um, I do believe, though, that there are some extreme cases where people get injured so much that they're fucked. I'm not saying that that's happened with Lorne because I just don't know. I, you know, I'd only be if I say, oh, you know, leave him alone because it's not his fault. It's not as simple as that. But I think we're all wise enough to know that there's certain things that can happen to people at certain points. Even words can be uttered to people. Like it was a, a book that you recommended to me once, Shin, actually, about how important it is to be kind to people. I think it was the Four Agreements or something. I can't remember what it was. And uh, it was said that something can be told to a child at a certain age and they'll never recover because they believed it. And your mind is so susceptible at that age that you're then completely screwed. Like some people well, never recover. When it triggers, it, especially when it triggers long, lingering, lasting emotional damage, like shame um, or or guilt or fear if it constantly triggers those emotions it's going to stick with you throughout life yeah and this is all fear but can i say also i think this is a this is a really well written paragraph too i i really like that and i love the way she described lauren as verbally aggressive it's a pretty good good way of putting Mm -hmm. it um Oh yeah, there's and also I think she she also described the the relationships with the catfish as what did she call it mutually abusive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think there's no yeah, doubt about that. <laughs> no. Um, first, the family oh, right, so we, it may have taught him that relationships are best managed by maintaining a facade and that people are not to be trusted. That's a common thing, isn't it, for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's not exclusive to Mr. Armstrong. Um, this is consistent with the results of the P... What? Of the what? Uh, PAI. Personal yeah. assessment? Uh, is that what it is? Personal? I'm trying Person- to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, I think personal assessment inventory, inventory. maybe. Personal yeah. assessment yeah. inventory, I think. Yeah. Mm. It's one of the tests that he took. Mm. Uh, or he may- lied about himself. <laughs> yeah uh, it may also be that the history of abuse has taught him antisocial values and patterns that is the abuse may have caught him taught him that saying things that are untrue and being verbally aggressive are the best way to navigate relationships yeah I mean of course um, as somebody you want to be friends with huh um, it, it is interesting his pattern, you know, his, his inclination to consistently lie is is quite remarkable, really, because it's just like, I think it's touched upon something. He does it like it's second nature to him. Yeah. But his lies aren't about, like, uh, whether he should have said yes or versus, you know, he he, he didn't say yes, he, he meant no, whatever. His lies are about really lofty things you know creating situations uh they're they're just long and and drawn out and and you know so involve virtue signaling usually things like that he makes up stories not necessarily they're great stories, you know, are though. yeah they're fantastic they're <laughs> yeah yeah dump truck man yeah um, and uh he's terrible at them though they're not convincing at all. You think after a lifetime he would be better at it? He's really bad at it. Mm, he's pretty bad at everything, though. And, and for somebody with a Sorry, shitty Mark. memory, too, that's a hell of a way to live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you've just hit an L on the head there, Shane. That, that might be where the humor yeah. comes from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um,. Right, Tiffany, do you want to read the final paragraph, please? Mr. Armstrong reports he does not drink alcohol. He did not add that he had recently stopped. The (laughs) SASSI suggests there is a high probability of him having a substance abuse disorder. If he has recently stopped drinking, this may account for the scores. However, if he has not stopped drinking, he is unlikely to connect the problems he experiences with his alcohol use. 
Mr. Armstrong should not drink alcohol, and he would benefit from changing the patterns that support his drinking. He readily acknowledged getting drunk and yelling at people with whom he considered himself to be in a romantic relationship. There may be other times when his drinking has caused him problems in relationships. This would be worth exploring with him. Yeah. Well, let him have one beer. Come on. <laughs> yeah, what's the worst that can happen? I know. The, Jesus, is this guy allowed to do about anything? He can't fucking try it on with kids. He can't have a drink. I mean, come on. Give the guy a break. <laughs> This is probably this is probably what bummed Lauren out the most about this report to see that he'll he should never drink again. <laughs> right. I, I know that he's thinking about when I get off probation. That's the first thing I'm doing. I'm I'm gonna grab an 18 pack. Well, I agree. Speaking of which, from that new thruple call, the video call where he immediately gets a cigarette cigarette out, which I thought was interesting yeah. because hadn't, hadn't he already given up? But yeah, he had a packet of cigarettes. He's wait, just shit. waiting there. Just waiting, just waiting for him to lie at the moment that he was dissed on. And he did yeah. it like it was a huge when, kind of like blow to uh, whoever was what Luca was doing. Uh, yeah, you're I'm it's lighting up a cigarette. See what you're doing? And, and the cigarette yeah. was the size of a pool cue. It was huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what was that? Is that one of them he super had, strength? Oh. What the fuck was that, man? He They're had like old lady cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah. They're like old grandma cigarettes. They're like 12 inches long. And yeah. he holds them like a lady too. But yeah, when you quit smoking, you you don't have packs of cigarettes in your house that will tempt you to smoke them. Of course, you get rid of them. You don't buy more. Lauren, they were right there in front of him. Right oh, yeah, there. Like it's like shin in his gum when he tells us he's got rid of it all. Oh, dude, it's true. right there in your pocket. Yeah. Don't lie to me, dude. <laughs> You have to believe me. You have to. <laughs> but, it's totally you know Andrew, it's you know his what? fault. I, Every time I, you chew gum, he stressed you out. Congratulations, yeah, though, Andrew. I, you know, Lauren and I are the same. You're absolutely right. But <laughs> I guarantee, though, that as soon as, even if there was no argument that caused him to relapse in front of Jamie and right in your face, um, I guarantee that as soon as that, that conference or whatever that thing was over, he would have lit it up anyway. He, he would oh, sneak yeah. Smoke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He never quit. Never. He right. quit. That's just like minute. that's just like Lauren was never vegan. You know, he never quit right. smoking ever. He just d- didn't do it with them on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. He was oh so God. defiant, like a child. Mm-hmm. When he lit that oh, up and yeah. he looked right in the camera, he's like, "Thank you, Jamie," or whatever he said, <laughs> like in your face, in your face. That's Jamie. when the wobble tooth made an appearance too. Oh yeah, it's huge. Yeah. The thing he was loving every second of that little charade, wasn't he? It's like I'm gonna yes. get that cigarette, I'm gonna light it, you're gonna see it, I'm gonna enjoy it. This is what you've done. It's like, oh, yeah. I, I wanted to reach into the screen and fucking wring his neck. Mm-hmm. It was funny though. Yeah. Well, what I, I thought was, hoping, was funny yeah, was I... after after the blow up and he was angry at learning this news he took them on a tour of his trailer and yeah. showed show played show and lauren loves to play show and tell you guys ever noticed that <laughs> yeah he does. he'll he'll yeah, take pictures of everything show, yeah well he was showing the the dishes um from the you know that that were made in the 80s and 90s that he found at the dump or yard sales or whatever remember these plates jamie I got Jamie all over this fucking house. He's created a shrine <laughs> to this woman in his home yeah, with the what display was all that case. About? What? What? The, somebody I, explain that to me. What the fuck is that? Okay, I think what those the were. Trophy case, what, damn it. Well, when he was out at like auctions and stuff, I guess he would have the robot on the phone with him, and he would show her all the garbage that he was looking at, and he would say. What do you think, Jamie? Should I get this or that or whatever? And she oh, would like pick out the That's ugliest thing and be like, "Yeah, Lauren, get that. I love it. I really want that." Oh, that so he great. would buy all this shit and um, put it around his home. And you know, he lives in a fantasy. Like I'm sure, as he's putting these dishes in his cupboard, he's imagining Jamie at the <laughs> sink washing the dishes in her little apron. This beautiful. 24 year old porn star who's six feet tall is in her little apron in Lauren's trailer <laughs> washing the dump dishes in their happy little yeah. 
you know, their happy little yeah, life that's together. A, that's actually a really good premise for a fucking great movie, that, isn't it? Like some kind of crazy fucking twisted reality movie. You could do something with that. Like this tr- trailer, terrible trailer with this sex offender living in and there's this hot as fuck model wearing just this apron dancing to Lon's tune. Like you could do something with oh, that. Jesus. That's well, how that fucking it. ridiculous it is. He used yeah. all these items, these dump items as like a guilt trip after this. Oh, Jamie, you had mm-hmm. sex with this guy when we weren't together. Look at look at my trailer. You're all over the place here. There's the Christmas ornament that you told me to buy. You look at all this stuff that I bought for you. It's in my home, be, you know, for you, waiting for you. So you owe it to me to be my girlfriend. Was, because I collected all this shit. At that point? Um, were they in a ruffle at that point? I don't know because he wasn't but... he wasn't paying attention to Casey at all. I felt yeah, I know Th- they were in this ruffle <laughs> at this point. Yeah. <laughs> of course, they were both on the phone. Yeah, Casey took the back burner because there was a threat. You know, Rod was going to take Jamie, so all mm-hmm. his focus was on was on Jamie at the time. And well, at least that... Jamie, at least Jamie was concerned about how Casey was feeling. Lauren did not even ask. Mm-mm. Yeah, Casey was piling on too with Jamie. <laughs> when? When? Yeah, he was a little troublemaker, man. <laughs> but but that trophy case is huge. It takes up half his trailer for these three little, little knickknacks. It's really weird, and they're on the ground. They're not even at eye level. It's so strange. It is strange. I yes. mean, I, I don't. I think he may have, it may have been ripped out of a high school or something. I don't know. <laughs> You're right. It's the one on the wall. You know, Did you guys weird. see the yeah. things that were in the display case, though? Yeah. Was... Those are great. <laughs> I think they were, like, coffee mugs or Reborn said they were, like, um, like creamer pitchers, you know, like milk pitchers. Yeah, that's what it looks like, the little the little heads. So but they were, they like, historical that? figures. They, yeah. They, oh. I don't know who they were. I can't remember, but they were, like, <laughs> old American presidents or something ridiculous. <laughs> and Lauren just bought them because Jamie said she liked them. Well, What's you know what's funny like? about that, too, is that it's almost like a display case of his most prized possessions. Mm-hmm. Because he has his, those dumb trophies in there. Oh, man. Those trophies. <laughs> those trophies. We got to talk about that. Reborn says he might have a call of him explaining that. I guess he, uh, yeah. if it was the same contest for both of them. He won first and second prize. Because the I think guy didn't want a second prize. Two... Oh, really? Or was it two different times? I, was, I think I Reborn was said. Well, I, I think Reborn said that. Um, okay. That I think uh, he, the guy didn't want they... the second prize trophy, so right. Lauren took it. Right. It was oh, from the, the I, same I didn't time. Want place for Lauren either. Oh, so, that's even I better. Know. I was the way that I thought it was was that he went to a contest. There was nobody else there, so he got first place. And then the next time they did it, there was somebody there, so he got second place. That's how I thought it went. Oh, that'd be that'd be a good <laughs> no. story too. I like that one. Yeah. No, I think the way I think the way Reborn told it was that it was the same. That's time. great. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> yeah, like, who, would them. you want a tro- <laughs> Would you accept a trophy where you place second to Lorne? Well, why would, would Lauren take wanna... the second <laughs> Only if it trophy. was like sex offender, you know, like one. Wouldn't... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Runner up. <worse>. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'd be quite please happy be with me, that. But... Me, me. <laughs> I don't understand why he would take the second place trophy that he did not win. Why couldn't he just be content with the first place trophy? He just wanted two for his stupid little display case. Same it's contest. great. It's great. And then he can oh. have two trophies. Yeah, what, what's what's that about, right? In the background where you can see the toilet roll hanger. What's all that about? <laughs> as, is is he recording it in his toilet? No, it's, he no. explains in the video, he bought a pink corner sink to install in that room. I oh, I don't know. He showed it, too. Have, right, he it's showed it. I, there, I, yeah. Is that the closet? Was that Jamie's yeah, closet that he was that's recording? Okay. Closet. Yeah. Yeah. So he bought that pink corner sink from like the seventies, I'm sure. And he was going to install it in Jamie's closet so she could wash her 
hands after she put her makeup on. I really don't know why you would need a sink in a closet when the he lives in a tiny trailer. Why do you need a it's not like the closet? bathroom yeah. isn't three feet away. Right. But he, of course, he never got around to installing that, that sink. Well, well you know what the thing is, talk. too, is he didn't. I don't think, I mean, this is kind of the way that Lauren works, right? Because this is how it was with the windows too. Um, I think that he probably saw the sink and got it and then said, mm-hmm. I'll put it in here versus, cause it's kind of the same thing, like with the window in the closet, he just, he happened to get a window. He wasn't planning on putting one in there. It wasn't like he went out looking for it, but because it was at the dump or on the side of the road or whatever, he said, Hey, here's a window. Let's put it on. Tiffany, didn't he do the same thing with the prison toilet? <laughs> I don't remember the prison toilet. I, I, I know that there it. was one. And I remember because it was in the living room, right? And Roy right, like, right, fell asleep right. on it or something. But I don't know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it could have, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it was in the living room. Spare toilets. I remember yeah. a picture that, that he took of like his deck or porch area, whatever you'd call it. I guess it would be, I guess it was a deck and there was just a toilet sitting on it. <laughs> I don't know if it was a spare toilet, an extra, or if he just hadn't installed it yet, but guys just got toilets and copy machines and beanie babies all over that property. Oh my god! Yeah, those Beanie Babies that he was never able to get rid of. Isn't it like amazing? It's just kind of dawned on me a little bit how much stuff this guy gives us to talk about. Not that it's not obvious, because fucking hell, how many mm. videos have I done? But just the littlest thing in a video. There's a toilet roll fucking dispenser there. What, what's all that about? And suddenly it takes you on this journey of ludicrousness. It's like it's just fucking. What? It's just he it provides us with so much, doesn't he? It? It's remarkable, really. It really yeah. is. For somebody so dull, <laughs> he's kind of not dull at the same time. It's, yeah. I remember the first time I saw that, uh, I think he mentioned it on a stream me and Amanda James did with Adam, but the first time I saw that video call, I was just, I literally was in hysterics rolling around on the floor in my home. I, it was just so funny to me that this guy is talking to this picture and a smudge and a robot voice, and then another robot voice, and taking it all so seriously. I was, and as soon as you hear the robot say "hello," that's when I lost it. I, <laughs> I just did completely too. lost it at that point. I was like, F- "This is just, <laughs> it's just." I, I can't find the words to describe how much of a stupid. It's kind of, it is the workings of a comedy movie. Like a really, like on par with Dumb and Dumber. But yeah, it's a real scenario that this guy, well, not a real scenario, you get the point. It's like, it is a real scenario that this guy bought into. And you just, yeah. dude, he, dude, there's a fucking... I forgot. I, I forgot to bring up the best part of of the video. He So Lauren said at the beginning of the call, we need to keep this PG because probation can watch it. And then do you guys remember what he pulled out yeah. after Jamie told him? He pulled out this fucking giant dildo the that was sent Yeah, but him. only the yes. balls. <laughs> only the balls? What? I mean, <laughs> yeah, but but you, also... you can't show all 16 inches of it. <laughs> You can only show the balls. That's right. Yes, yeah, Shane. He pulled out the, you... the pecker pouch. Right, 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 right. Yeah. What an idiot. But you know what's <laughs> funny about that though too is that he takes out he takes out the Lamandre and he takes out the pecker pouch. But the funniest part about that is his smile and he blushed. <laughs> Did yeah. you see him blushing? He was all blushing. Like he was he was that he was so happy to be showing. Oh yeah, and the sex drawing too. Oh my god. Oh my god. I of course, how could I forget that? He what? knowing that probation could be watching this. Mm-hmm. He pulls Wouldn't out that ridiculous be, drawing. About that, was was probation monitoring him at this time? Um, well, yeah. I, I don't know that they were I don't know that they were watching it live. Um but oh I know they, they were watching everything. They yes. they had the monitor company certainly would have been they, keeping tabs on it. They told oh. him specifically because he had to go through them to set up this Zoom call. 
he couldn't just do that on, oh, yeah. on his own without them knowing it. Yeah. So he he knew they warned him and said, Lauren, don't get dirty. OK, because we have to watch this shit. Yes. Oh, I that's know so funny. that. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine what, what probation officers must be thinking when they see that? That's <laughs> a crazy idea. Right. It's like, it's here like, he goes again. Do you remember I what I said? Can you remember what I said? Like, imagine if they're watching that video. Right. <laughs> oh, I've got to, I can't speak. When he pulled out that drawing, the triangle of love with Jamie standing over squatting over Lauren's face and poor little Casey all crunched up down there. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Jamie's torso must have been six feet long to make that work. <laughs> yeah, but get, yeah that the was great. That they talked about from, from probation standpoint, just the idea of who is in attendance. A porn star who's beautiful <laughs> and, <laughs> and Casey... Who got him busted in a, in a national? <laughs> I know. Thing. I know. <laughs> it's just, amazing. Just the optic of that is is just hilarious. It, and it, probation must... has. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Well, I was gonna say probation <laughs> saw pictures of Jamie because Lauren had printed out poster size pictures of her and put them yeah. all around his trailer. <laughs> and when they raided his trailer, they made him get rid of them. So they they saw this unnaturally beautiful young girl. So th- you know they knew that Jamie is is a lie. Yeah, it's a catfish. Yeah, and then just what do you think? Of yeah, one Never glance at that photograph would would yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do you remember his response, uh, Amanda, to that when they said? Yeah, he said. What do you think? I've never been with a beautiful woman before. That's yeah. what he said. And and mm-hmm. do you remember when his mother? Saw the picture of of uh, the robot. <laughs> yes, said, I remember that too. He said that she, she said, said you're, "You're not going to have sex with her." That's what she said. <laughs> As an eighty year old woman, that's what she's going to say. What a strange Bullshit. thing never to happened. Right. Yeah, of course not. Maybe Lauren said something like, "Yeah, mom, you didn't think I could have sex with a woman like that, did you?" But I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't think you're so great. She always knows better than Lauren, doesn't she? Every single time. She does. Everybody knows better. Mm-hmm. Oh, my yeah. God. So it's, I, I, it's all so funny. I, I'd love to see if, if probation, they'd laugh. They're just, like, in bemusement. They're pissed off. They're angry at him. Like, I'd love to know what kind of... Because this is their job. We're just looking at it from a comedic perspective and just laughing at the ludicrousness of this guy because it's just a hobby for us. It's their fucking job. Do you know what I mean? I know. Yeah. They're probably yeah. just frustrated, and that's why they were like, go ahead, Lauren, get on, get on Zoom with these women. See what happens. See if you have a beautiful 24-year-old model and Casey Morrow looking back at you through the, through the camera. Maybe they did that to, if that to show him that... It. He was being fucked with. It didn't uh, work. Uh, who was it? Uh, Bee's knees said it perfectly. If that doesn't hit hit home, he, he he should look at that picture of that beautiful statue West Jamie with Lauren next to her. He's like three feet short. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love that picture. <laughs> yeah, they're both doing the kissy face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, that, so if, if he doesn't learn anything from that, he won't learn anything at all. What's wrong with this picture, Lord? Nothing. It was right. It was my girl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, he doesn't. And then in the background, they had the trailer failure. (laughs) It's just his garbage, his backyard. (laughs) Oh, dear, oh, dear. Right. Uh, My stomach is is hurting from laughing, just like um, JC Dina said in the chat. So we're going to have to get going. Um, It's been, we've finished the report, guys. Are we pre- yes. took us five videos? Yes. Oh, we, I wish so, we could say this about the chat log. Man. Maybe I was thinking we could go over his, his assignment. I know you two were going to do it on your own. I'm not going to steal it from <laughs> we, you because. You yeah, know. don't steal it. But we'll have a we'll have a discussion at some point about it. But anyway, even if not, there's 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 lots of stuff we can put it this way, guys. As long as we're all still here and we don't lose interest, there's a load of shit we can talk about. Um, well, you know, I was I was looking over his lawsuit um, against NBC recently, and we what one did, we talked about um, one of his appeals, right? We did that a couple years ago. Yes. What was that? Mm-hmm. 
Well, we didn't go over the NBC stuff. I and don't yeah, think we did. Group, yeah. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. I, I was looking I over that. that there's lots of. There's lots of ridiculous shit in that. Right. I. Um... He, he did, and it was yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. Are you are you up for that, Tiffany? Yeah. Cool. What about um, you know we didn't finish we didn't finish the creature yet. Right? I don't think we should. <laughs> really? Yeah, but because there's people, nothing to people, finish. Yep. Yeah, people are finished. dying to know what happened. Okay. No, they're All not. Right. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> they might find another cave with like a like a snowmobile in it and get out of there. You never yeah. know. Uh, maybe. I was Didn't Reborn put the whole thing up? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, because didn't whole... Lauren read the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so if people want to know how it ends, kind of, they can they All can right. watch oh, it or listen. Yeah. yeah. Right. You have to hear Lauren read it, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. awful. <laughs> you opened uh... the door for Shelly and he kissed her. On the mouth. Like, Isn't that something he always says too? Kissed her kiss on the Kissed her mouth. on the lip. The lip. The lip. Don't, 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 don't. You're bringing painful <laughs> memories back. Because the thing is, with taking a board, I was actually enjoy not enjoying it from like a, an artistic perspective, but there was like a real insight into Lawn and learning. A, you Brain, could yeah. learn something from it, but the creature's just a fucking stupid mess. It, it's, it's fucking it, awful. He'll yeah. spend hey. forty-five hey. minutes explaining how he laid a rope on the ground <laughs> hey, and, guys, and poured oil on it. Is no joke. Just <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good part. That was very funny. I, yeah. I, the I, to me, the the best part was the relationship between him and his girl. He threw everybody else under the bus. He'd fight the monster, then disengage and come back for a kiss, and then go back and fight the monster. Like, well, the he, what I thought was interesting, and and it did kind of give a little glimpse into Lauren's very um, juvenile mind when it comes to relationships is the other, the friends that were with them that, you know, they were all sort of like on a triple date to go hiking and yeah. the significant others of, of the two, what there was Whitney. I don't remember that Whitney and Holly and then their boyfriends. So the couples That's were right. split up because one of the, the significant others it was killed. And then the two remaining ones who had just had their boyfriend or girlfriend murdered by a creature, they started to like romantically connect with each other. Oh, so God. They, they, there was no grieving over their dead boyfriend or girlfriend. They're just like, they might well, just be very shallow people like Lauren. Think about who's writing this. Well, I know. That's what I'm saying. It gives you, like, a glimpse into Lauren's mind. Like, oh, my boyfriend's gone, but there's this other guy here. He's a boy. <laughs> it's as easy as that. He was, <laughs> yeah. he was best friends with my deceased boyfriend, but, you know, he's here. Why not? We'll, we'll make it, right. you know, a little couple's retreat, and we'll just substitute, which I, I thought was insane and, and ridiculous that nobody was grieving for their dead friends. They were just drinking coffee and eating donuts. <laughs> You got to move on, Amanda. You got to move on. Yeah, that's true. You know, no use crying. You carry on somehow. Yeah, maybe we should, we'll we'll have a discussion about whether we're going to finish. We'll, we'll, I, I can't remember where we're up to, but yeah, it was. Um, it was it was painful. Let's put it that way. Um, and it's not finished, by the way. To be fair, we haven't finished the last chapter, but that's not the last chapter of the book. He never finish this book right no well that's why right. i was like it seems quite fitting that we didn't finish lawn's unfinished book um <laughs> yeah but uh right i'm gonna have to get going uh thank you we've had a lot of people in the chat i really appreciate you coming by thank you very much um could you do us a favor because i think a lot of people will enjoy this it's been pretty funny just like the video because i think if you like it, it uh there's it's more chance of getting picked up in people's speed so just like it, if you don't mind. Um, anyway, so uh, thank you very much to Tiffany, um, Amanda James, and Shins Koala. Um, it's been a good laugh, I think. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what we'll do next time, but we've got plenty of shit. Lon's got, uh, L Lon's got an infinite amount of stuff, and Shins got an infinite amount of notes. Of, of stuff he can yeah. do like he's still got that yellow legal pa uh, legal pad from the back of the courtroom that he used and all yeah. sorts of stuff so we'll, 
but with with uh, yeah, when we're all free, we'll be doing something soon. So don't worry, guys. So thanks for dropping by. Um, <clears throat> we'll catch up with you soon. 